nerds and nerdettes and we little nerdlings all. It's your buddy, Big John and G, the two gun fix it presents Legendary Gaming. All right, welcome back to another uh, how to play, but this isn't really so much a how to play because the game Kosteros comes with uh, several different modes that you're able to do. One of them is using them as actual tarot cards. So what I want to do here is give you a quick overview of tarot cards and what the differences are between the major and minor arcana and as well as inside the minor arcana give you an overview of some of the court cards. Now, this is not going to be a complete in-depth examination of each and every card and what they traditionally and typically mean, but I will be doing a later series of videos for these cards where we will look more specifically at what they are and what they mean. But for right now, I believe that this overview of what the cards kind of stand for and their relationship to each other should be good enough to give you enough basic information that you're going to be able to enjoy this as tarot cards. Please go ahead and look at more in-depth examinations of each and every card, and that will help you understand it a little more. Now, the last thing I just want to say before going into this is that Two Gun Pixie does not advocate the use of divination. We are not stating that we believe that the cards are an actual way for you to divine the future. This is for entertainment purposes. Now, with that said, why don't we examine how to play or use Quisteros as tarot cards? I'll see you down the table. You've gotten your hands on the Questeros game, and you've played through the solo and the multiplayer modes, and you've enjoyed it. But now you want to see what it's like to use it as tarot cards. Well, if you've never used a deck of tarot cards before, let me talk you through it. Each deck is represented by a major arcana and a minor arcana. The major arcana has 21 number cards, as well as the jester, or fool card, which has no number assigned to it. The Major Arcana represents more of the divine or cosmic sense that is around you. It is life changes and transformations. It marks monumental moments in your life. Now, these groundbreaking moments are definitely larger than you yourself. And that is what the cards represent. Now, the chronological numbering of them, their exact order, well, that represents the passage of time. And the Fool not having a number, well, that's sort of there to show that there's always a little bit of the adventurer in us. Someone who is seeking their path. Now, when looking at the Minor Arcana, we're looking at cards that are more down-to-earth uh, and dealing with personal matters. Everyday kind of stuff. The actions depicted in these cards are actions that are triggered by human desires or actions. They are much more personal and close than the Major Arcana cards are. The Minor Arcana comes in four suits. Each suit has ten numbered cards and four court cards. Much as the cards in the Major Arcana deal with the passage of time based on their numbers, we see this reflected in the Minor Arcana as well. The number cards tell time. Starting with the Ace card of each suit, it donates the beginning, or the start, of something. While the Ten, on the other hand, symbolizes the end, or completion. Now the Court cards, they mirror this act of progression, but from a much more individual point of view and understanding of the events affecting and unfolding around their lives. Now, this knowledge of self-awareness, this wisdom, it is shown that it increases from the page to the knight, from the knight to the queen, and from the queen to the king. 
Each suit is linked not only to their own aspect, their own sphere of life, but also to one of the four classical elements. Wands tie to fire, and they are cards of passion and inspiration. Pentacles are earth symbols, and they are representing the physical world, things like money. Swords are linked to air, and matters of the mind. Cups are water icons, and they are the emotional aspect of the deck. Through these suits, the sphere of influence, which are most affecting the individual, are brought to light. Although it is true that each individual card in both the Major and Minor Arcana have their own separate and individual meanings, just for time constraint in this particular video, if you understand the points that they represent, it is a good starting point for you right here. Now, I will be doing future videos where I will be able to get more in-depth on the cards and what each one classically represents. But for right now, the general understanding of what their series of influence are and how time progresses through the cosmic effects, the environmental effects, as well as the personal effects in one's life, you have a pretty good understanding. Tie that in with what each suit means, and you're ready to go. But where do you start? There are a lot of different spreads that can be put down on the table of the cards. I'll quickly go over three of the most popular spreads. Sorry to disappoint you. Huh? You triggered my trap card. The three card spread, the five card spread, and the ten card Celtic cross. No matter what kind of spread you're laying out on the table to do a reading. There are a couple of things you're going to want to keep in mind. Classically speaking, the reader will hand the cards to the individual who is willingly asking for a reading. That individual will then shuffle the cards three times. Each time they shuffle the cards, they are to mentally visualize what it is that they want to know. They need to know exactly what they want the cards to answer. At this point, they will hand the cards back to the reader, who will decide on one of these layouts or others. As I said, there are many, many layouts you can find online. These are just three of the most classic. The three card spread is classically done from left to right. The first card representing the past, the second the present, and the third the future. And you will look at these cards and you will see what is affecting each of those categories in your life, or what is affecting the question that you directly asked. Now, one of the beautiful things about the three-card spread, besides being so quick, fast, and easy to do, is that there are so many different things that can be asked of the cards. It's not just simply past, present, and future. You can wonder about things like mind, body, and spirit, or things that maybe you should stop, start, and then continue. Maybe you want to know what it is that brings people together, what pulls you apart from someone, and what needs a little bit more attention. Any three question setup is perfect for this. And again, it'll be a quick reading, it'll be a fast reading, something you can do anywhere on the fly. Now the five card spread takes this and it moves it and advances it a little bit further. While you still have your basic left to right three card setup, such as past, present, and future, let's say, you are also going to have a card above and below the center present card. Now, again, there are different things that these can represent. Classically, things like the potential above you and the reasons that are holding you back below you. They could be personal influences above you while external influences below you. And together with the past, present, and future, or whatever the three setup that you use is, perhaps mind, body, and spirit, you'll be able to pull together a little bit more of a comprehensive answer, or deeper insight at the very least. This is another version of the three-card spread. It is a little bit longer to do because of the two extra cards, and it still gives you, though, a quick, fast answer. Now, the ten-card Celtic cross spread is a bit deeper, and a little bit more involved, and it will therefore give you more things to think about. This spread is 
a little bit deeper, but still begins similar to the way you set up, or at least visually see the cards being set up, in the three and five card spread. So for this one, you're going to be putting the first card down in front of you, and this classically represents where you are now. The next card is going to be laid across it, which usually symbolizes a challenge that is in front of you. Below the first and second card is going to be the third, the focus card. What it is that you need to focus on in this matter. To the left, you're going to be putting the card that represents the past. Things from your past that may be still affecting you in this particular situation. Above the one, two, and three card is going to be found your strengths. What it is that you will find that helps you. What it is deep down inside of you that there is a connection to whatever this situation is and you will be able to get resolved from it. Finally, on the right, is going to be the future. What the future could potentially hold with all of these situations, all of these effects, all of these things that are pondering on you, that are holding you back, that are inspiring you, how they can all come together potentially for your near future. Now, to the right-hand side, you're going to have a progression of four cards going up. The next card, the seventh, which is going to be put down, this is dealing with internal influences. Things that you feel, things that are coming from you personally, your feelings, your memories, your experiences, and how that is all coming together and affecting you in this particular situation. Now the next card up represents external influences, things like family members, jobs, friends, siblings, how they are affecting you and your situation, whether in a negative or positive way, things that you may not actively have been aware of. Now the next, the ninth card, is a card that represents possibly your hopes, possibly your fears. It might represent both. But these are driving factors in your situation, in your question. These are matters that will ultimately help or hinder you, depending on how you let them control you, or you take control of them. And ultimately, the potential future of all of this put together is the tenth and final card. Now, when reading the cards... Not only do you need an understanding of what the cards generally mean, but the way they're situated together sometimes can also affect each other. And in fact, certain cards out on the table at the same time will affect each other. There is a certain grouping of cards that you might want to be aware of, because they could sort of synergize with each other's meanings, and that is what's known as a constellation. A constellation is when you get four cards from different suits, all of the same number. So four ones would be a constellation of one. Four sevens would be a constellation of seven. And depending on what the question is and where they are lined up in a particular reading could have a much larger impact than reading them individually. Part of reading cards you will learn as you go on isn't just knowing the generalization of what a card could mean because of its suit. Not only does it mean knowing a specific card by meaning, but a lot of times it comes from feelings as well. Certain cards feel certain ways, especially in certain placements of it. And it's something you're going to have to actually experience that can't be taught. But you will notice what I mean. And you will get these certain feelings, whether it's from groupings like constellations, or just the way they're sitting across from each other, or above each other. They're going to affect the meaning. Now, I'm not going to get into right now, but possibly during the deeper delve that I'll be doing with individual cards, 
we will be talking about the importance of inverted cards. Sometimes cards will come out upside down, and they will have altered meanings to their original upright position. But we'll be getting to those when we deal with the individual cards. Right now, I think you have enough of the basic information to get a general feeling of what these cards mean when they're used for divining the future. Now, Two Gun Pixie, myself, and Fundamental Games, we do not advertise this as a way to tell the future. This is entertainment and for entertainment purposes only. And that is how it is being sold. And that is how it is being enjoyed. So the tarot aspect of the deck is a lot of fun. You'll see more on these cards and deeper definitions in upcoming episodes. I'm your buddy Big Johnny G for Two Gun Pixie Presents Legendary Gaming. And my friends, I am out of here. <laughs>